Hi friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to try our hand at painting realistic icicles. We're going to be painting this one inside of our watercolor journal. Once again, I'm using my Paul Rubens hot pressed watercolor journal. It's a size five by seven. I've applied tape around the edges just for pretty borders. And so it ends up being about four by six inches. My paints today are my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set. These you can see have gotten a lot of use. They're a wonderful student grade paint and they actually come with a water brush, which I've lost. So I'm going to be using my Trakel size six round brush. I have a water jar, a spray bottle for activating my paints, a pencil, and of course paper towel for blotting and controlling how much water is in your brush. The first thing you're going to want to do is sketch on some icicles. In my reference photo, which I'll include in the description below, there is a very prominent icicle that's mostly in the focal point, and it's probably a little over a third of the way across. If you divide the top of your composition into thirds, I would say the beginning of it starts right there, which is about a third of the way. And it doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna actually make it just a little bit shorter than the reference photo, just because we're working with a slightly more oblong composition here. At the base of the icicle, you can see the ice extends and curves up a little bit like that. So try to include that. Make it a little bit knobby, a little bit imperfect. I'm just going to straighten it out a little more so it looks like it's got gravity working for it. And then there are a couple of icicles in the background. Notice in the reference photo how these are blurred out. They're not in focus. So we're going to be working to achieve that effect by using watercolor techniques like wet and wet, adding a little icicle over there. And then this one's a little more in focus than those other icicles in the background. This one comes pretty close to that one. All of them have a little bit of a bulbous shape at the tip where the water is dripping. So that's something to observe in your drawing. And then this one is almost as long as your focal point icicle. All right, so just keep in mind these don't have to be exactly like the reference photo. As long as you're somewhere in the ballpark, it'll still look really cool. All right, so there we've got our rough sketch. Now for this next step, I want to apply some masking fluid to preserve some of the edges of our icicles. And if you don't have masking fluid, you can always apply an opaque white paint at the end. For masking fluid, it's a good idea to pre-wet your brush to help preserve those bristles. Masking fluid is notorious for destroying brush bristles. So use this with caution. Make sure you're using a brush that you're not super attached to. Wetting the brush ahead of time. And then I'm gonna grab a generous amount of masking fluid and apply it to the left side of this central icicle. The goal here is to create a really nice hard edge so we can paint loosely and expressively in the background without having to worry about losing our details in the icicle. In fact, you can go ahead and use the masking fluid all inside of that icicle, especially at the tip here. Again, this is just to help protect the paper so that we can paint the background. I don't necessarily trust myself to paint loosely and freely around these perfectly, so this will help me be able to do that. And then I'm going to apply masking fluid on this one right here, just in the highlight for this background one, because when I put down some of my background colors, I'm going to let a little of that overlap into these background icicles. So for these, I'm only protecting the white highlights. And with this other more prominent one, I'm going to cover the whole center of it all the way to the pencil edges using tons of masking fluid. The more you apply, the easier it will be to remove. You don't have to worry about it sticking to your paper. Because this is a hot pressed paper, it is a little more sensitive to scrubbing or rubbing. Like what you have to do to remove the masking fluid can be kind of hard on the paper. So if you use a generous amount of the masking fluid, it will come off and peel off more like latex and you won't have to scrub quite so hard to get it off. It does take a little longer to dry. Do not use a speeding up method like a hair dryer or a heat tool to try to speed up the drying process of masking fluid. That will actually permanently adhere your masking fluid to the surface of the paper. You definitely don't wanna do that. So you will have to let it naturally air dry for best results. And again, I'm just applying a generous amount anywhere I see highlights or bright shiny areas in these icicles, which there are a lot of them. So just fill that all in. All right, so with this step complete, we can now let those dry and then we'll continue on with our painting. All right, so that took about 20 minutes for it to dry. I think we're ready to start painting the background. On my Winsor & Newton Cotman set, I have Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue and this Turquoise Blue, and I think I'm gonna use those three colors mostly for this painting. But to start with the background, I'm gonna use Wet and Wet. 
Now with wet and wet, especially in hot pressed paper, you do have to work pretty fast to get the effects you're going for. And in the reference photo, there's this spot of light over here in the right corner, and then it kind of gradates darker towards this corner. And I love the look of that. So we're gonna try to imitate that here with our paint. So take your clean water and begin to cover it all over the background. And into those icicles where you didn't cover it is okay, since we're gonna be doing light colors up here towards the top. And a lot of that will be covered up with darker colors when we go into the details of the icicles. So if you're concerned about that, don't be. Working quickly, I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of yellow ochre, swirl it around in my palette, and apply that across the background in kind of this curved shape right here. And then again, working quickly, we're gonna take ultramarine blue, swirl it around the palette, and apply that right next to your yellow ochre. And you can let that overlap into those icicles, like I said. Now let's take some Payne's Gray, and we'll kind of work our way back up towards the light, starting with the corner here. And notice how I'm working my brush in kind of the same direction that I see the movement of the gradient in the background. We're gonna take a little more blue, pump up the color some more. Make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. And just apply that across the top. While it's still wet, you can push and pull that paint quite a bit and soften and manipulate with your brush strokes. All right, so once you're happy with that first wash, it is important to let that dry all the way before we go back in with more detail. If you wish to darken while it's still wet, you can. I'm actually gonna take a little bit more pigment, a little more Payne's Gray, and just go into that corner just a bit darker one more time while it's still wet. Again, just be careful not to have any additional water in your brush or that will disturb this layer as it's beginning to dry. It will cause backwash and blooms. Blot in your paper towel if there's any excess water in there. And now we're already beginning to reach the danger zone where it's beginning to dry. So probably time for me to stop. <laughs> Set your brush down, Emily. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry all the way and again don't use a heat tool to speed this up or you will cause the masking fluid to fuse to the surface you have to let it dry naturally fortunately the next step will be to remove the masking fluid so we won't have to worry about that and if you want to speed up the process with a heat tool after that of course you can okay with our background completely dry we can safely remove the masking fluid you can use clean dry fingers for this or you can also use a paper towel. For some reason, I've always preferred using my fingers. I think it's just because I can feel if I missed any, it just makes it easier. But yes, be gentle with this hot pressed paper. It can be a little bit easy to lift the surface of the paper if you're not careful. And then have a large soft brush on hand to whisk away those little fragments. But you can see because we did take the time to load on plenty of masking fluid, it's coming off a little bit easier didn't form a super thin film, which is harder to remove on a surface like this. And our perfectly preserved icicles are standing out so nicely against that background. Okay, so with our masking fluid completely removed, we can continue now with the fun details of the icicles themselves. I'm actually gonna start with these icicles that are more in the background. I want them to look a little bit blurrier than they look now. So what I'm going to do is re-wet the paper in this corner, just with clean water, being careful not to lift anything, but extending that water a little beyond the icicles. And then I'm gonna take some of that ultramarine blue that we mixed up earlier for the background and drop that in, make sure I have a little more paint on my brush on the right side of this far icicle. The reason I pre-wet the paper is because any further application of paint will soften nicely and kind of blend with the background color this way. At least that's what we're going for here. I've added a little more Payne's Gray in my mixture now and just running it along that edge and allowing it to soften into our pre-wet paper. I'm going to take a little more Payne's Gray here, mix it with that blue, and start to paint little details here. 
with the intent again of letting them soften wet and wet. You can kind of see these almost little circular shapes within the icicle, perhaps the collection of water as it froze inside of the shape. So including a little of that. And sure enough, this icicle is looking super blurry, which is great. That's just what we want. And if your paper's already dried a little bit, you can re-wet it on this other icicle here. Just make sure you don't have any puddles or pools. And don't extend your water into this icicle. This one's going to be much crisper and cleaner with really hard edges. So we don't want that to look soft. Taking our ultramarine and Payne's Gray again. Let's do a little more Payne's Gray now. And I want to darken right in the middle of the icicle right here. Remove a little excess water. So I'm taking this dark color along the right side of the icicle where it's the shadow side of it and we're leaving the tip of the icicle nice and bright. I'm going to take a little bit of this turquoise blue now. This is a color we haven't really used yet, but you can see it's a cooler blue which means it has just a little bit more yellow in the mixture. And I'm bringing that now into the shape right up next to the gray. Put some of that in this other one too. <laughs> And water it down a little bit more as we're coming towards the light. And we're really just softening out this icicle so that it almost disappears against the background. That's the goal. All right, so those look pretty blurry. Let's go ahead and work on this nice, crisp, clear icicle in the center. Okay, for this one, we're gonna need to work a little bit more detailed. You can stick with your size six brush, or if you have something smaller, you can switch to that. And I'm gonna spray my paints because they're just not quite wet enough. This will help really soak in those pans. I'm gonna start with pure Payne's Gray, swirling my brush in it so I have a generous amount on there, and then just twisting my brush around so it comes to a nice fine point. And from there, I'm gonna paint the shadow side first base of the icicle as clearly and detailed as I can. Remember that it kind of curves up to where it's originating from and there are a couple tiny little water droplets on the icicle itself. We may not be able to include all of these teeny tiny details since this is such a small painting. It's a small journal page that we're working on here but right now I'm just creating an outline on the shadow side of the icicle and then here in the skinny center I'm going to add a couple little dashes or vertical lines indicating the movement within the water, within the icicle, shadow shapes. It's very complex, but just try to squint at the reference photo and include those shapes that appear most important, especially when you squint and all else disappears. And if your Payne's gray is a little too dark, you can switch to blue or something else. Just adding a couple little vertical marks. Here in the fatter portion of the icicle, we see this kind of conglomeration of what almost looks like static shapes within it, just teeny tiny ice bubbles, water bubbles that formed within the icicle. So I'm painting a little bit of a shadow side, almost looking like scales. We're going to have to figure out a way to simplify this so that we don't get overwhelmed in all those details. So we'll see how this goes. We're going to try this. I've never actually painted icicles before, but I do know that a great tool for creating realism is to just hone in on the values, the, the lights and darks, and try to capture the shapes based on the values you're seeing. I'm going to rinse some of that out so I have a lighter gray now on my brush, swirl in the palette again, and I'm going to paint that lighter gray right here, right up next to those bubbles. And then I'm going to switch quickly to my ultramarine and paint that inside of the shape. Now is where you want to delicately avoid any tiny highlights that you might see within the icicle itself. There are a lot of tiny little light shapes in there. So just prioritize those in your own mind, which ones are the most important to include. Leave out any that you think might just be overly distracting if you do include them. And water that down a little more. And on the light side of the icicle, do some curving vertical brush strokes. And then I'm going to go across the top of most of this patch of bubbles, leaving a little bit of the white in areas where I want it to appear like there are highlights. And grabbing some more blue. Here at the tip of the icicle, there are some strong highlights to avoid, especially at the very tip. And along the outer edges, you want it to look wet, shiny, cold. That's pretty convincing so far. And we didn't even have to add every single detail. How about that? A little more gray here. 
a lighter gray as the icicle is curving towards the light. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the next one. So just one at a time, work your way across one icicle at a time. I'm gonna take some more ultramarine and actually mix in a tiny bit of the turquoise blue with it. So a nice light blue. And for this one, we'll start with that blue across the top and then grab some gray. And it's really nice that there is a distinct shadow side on each one. That certainly helps simplify it for us. If it was a flat light without a significant distinction between light and shadow, it would be much harder to paint. But when you have strong contrast like this, it makes it a joy and much, much easier to make it look realistic. So this one was pretty simple. We just added a shadow and then let's add a little bit of mid-tone blue again coming down on this side, and we need to add a gray shadow on the other side. Not a ton of detail, we're just suggesting it. Notice I left out this one icicle right behind our centerpiece. You could certainly include that one. I'm actually not sure why I didn't. I think I just forgot about it, honestly. <laughs> All right, so this one here in the foreground is softer because it's out of focus. It's actually coming towards us closer to us, but it's blurry because the camera actually was focusing on this particular area. So we're going to paint this one soft again with wet and wet, starting with our gray. We'll paint right up to our pencil edges, and because we pre-wet the paper, it'll just soften a little bit, not too much. Painting the shadow side with Payne's gray. Going darker wherever you see it darker in the reference photo, and bringing that shadow all the way down just leaving the tip bright white, which we protected that with masking fluid earlier. And then I'm gonna take that slight turquoise blue mixture, bring that into the center. Try not to cover up all of your white though. Leave plenty of highlights in your icicles. I'm gonna rinse that out and then just swipe along this edge so it's not quite so fuzzy looking. Now this one is quite in focus. Let's take our Payne's Gray and paint this dark area just before the droplet at the bottom. And you can pretty much just outline your pencil mark all on the right side where that shadow is so distinctive. Removing a little bit, it feels too dark to me. And you can add any of these swirling shapes that you see. This one almost looks like a hook. Try to describe them to yourself if that helps you get it down on the paper. What does that shape look like? Right now I'm painting just tiny dark details that I'm seeing in the reference photo. There's this sideways O shape right here. Rinse that out, and then we'll dip into our blue. Once again, this turquoise blue and the ultramarine combo. I'm gonna water it down a little more. Don't want it too vibrant. I think I need a little more ultramarine in the mix, less turquoise blue. Dip in the water, and again, trying to preserve any white of the paper where you see highlights in the reference photo. Rinsing a little more out of that. And with this one, the tip of the ice right here is a little bit bluer. It's not completely pure white. So let's paint that lovely difference right there. And then this is our last very detailed icicle. Once again, let's start with our darkest colors. This just helps give us a sense of where everything else needs to go darker. Now, I made the background not quite as dark as the reference photo here, so I'm gonna make the icicles not quite as dark. What they are reflecting back, of course, is the dark space behind them. So it wouldn't make sense visually if these colors were significantly darker than the background. After all, water is transparent and we're able to see through the ice. Okay, let's paint some of these details inside the icicle. There's just little spot shapes, very asymmetrical, uneven, bumpy. This is partly why if you don't paint this exactly like the reference photo, totally okay. Still gonna look really cool. All right, rinsing that out and again, grabbing my light blue. I enjoyed the combination of the two blues because the ultramarine is a nice warm blue and probably would have been fine on its own, but I love the little introduction of the hint of cool blue in there too. Just seems to balance that blue for me. So just adding hints of blue here and there. And then within the icicle towards the bottom here, I'm preserving the white of the paper just in a couple key spots. All right, and then the very last one is also in focus. Let's start with the blue for this one here at the top paint it in blue, and just leave out a couple little highlights. We could obviously spend a ton more time on this, painting every single little detail. And if you wanna do that, I'd love to see it. I think that would be such a cool painting. For the sake of this demonstration, we are trying to achieve a realistic look in a very short amount of time, relatively speaking. And to do that, we have to leave out 
tiny meticulous details, but we're painting the main thing, which is light and shadow, basic shapes, basic colors. Painting in all the darks that I see, distinctive shadow on this side. All right. Yay, so let's remove the tape and see how we did. This is my favorite part. What do you think? Does it look like icicles? I think so. What a fun painting. I hope you guys will try this one. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.